Mm-hmm, yeah. Here we go now. Oh, yeah, yeah. A party on now. Yeah. Uh-huh. No. Cha-cha-cha. Wow, wow. A doodle doodle doodle. Skiba deeba wow wow. Deedle doodle daddle doodle deedle doodle down. Yeah 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 yeah. Doodle laddle dootin deedin dootin dootin down. Skiba dooby doo doo. Happy Saturday, y'all. Get ready, get cozy, get comfortable. I'm here behind the curtain. Loosen up finger exercises. A loosey goosey. Hello, everybody. Good to see the happy people in there. Get your cup of coffee, get your cup of herbal tea ready. Settle in. We're going to stretch out. We're going to do the things in a little bit. In a little bit. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Do, ba, do, 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 yeah. Scoo, baby, do, baby, do, yeah. Squabba do ba da da and do it So, you know, I got to do some of that stuff and get it squared away. How are we doing, guitar friends? The people in the land of the this and the land of the that. You know, trying to be on all the formats. I think they said trying to be everything to everyone all the time works out great. That's what they said. But anyway, that's my way of saying if you're watching on the vertical format, uh, hello, happy Saturday. If you're watching on the horizontal, we love it. Pop quiz, first question. Um, the fancy name for horizontal in the land of, you know, aspect ratios. What's the fancy name for it? The vertical is called portrait. What's the fancy name? This is almost like coming from my graphic design background here, right? Let's turn up this drum beat. We're going to get into actually playing some guitar, making some noise. John, Tim Taylor, Tony Martino. A J O N John Wade Olson Otto Yo Otto the school bus driver from The Simpsons is here in the house. Ben Griswold, we're going to Wally World Griswold. Let's go, Michael Beckloff. Let's go, Jeff Blalack. Blalack. Blalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalal
you could be over there going. Right? So that's just E minor. You could also be doing sort of an E blues thing. You decide, you make the choice. You make the call. Does anyone remember that you make the call from way back in the day? Baseball games? Baseball. Yeah, that's what we're doing. We're getting a little bit frisky with it. All right, just keep loosening up if you want some ideas here. All right, if I wanted to go sort of E major, I could be spelling out the E major pentatonic, right? Yeah, if you came here to chat, that's great. If you came here to jam, that's great. If you came here to learn, that's even better. We could do it all in the same spot here, gang. The classic E major pentatonic. I want you to know that you got that dialed in. You got that on lock, as the kids say, or as the kids said until I just said it. If you're ever, ever tired of like the, the slang or the lingo that the young bloods are using, just start using it and then they'll stop immediately. It's a trick I learned. You reach a certain age. Wow. So that's just major pentatonic, right? Now let's say you wanted to make this kind of major blues, what you sometimes hear as mixolydian. Somebody tell me in the chat, what note could I add to a regular major scale or a major pentatonic that would immediately bring in that feeling of like, oh, this is a little bit bluesier. This is a little bit more like a, sort of like an E7 sounding chord rather than just the plain regular E major, right? I'm gonna reach for it. I'm gonna add it. Let's see, maybe I could add it over here. Maybe I could add it over here. Maybe I could add it over here. That flat seven, okay? So flat seven sounds kind of fancy. It's just a whole step below your root, right? So that might be a flavor. Let's sort of like, we'll make that, uh, we'll make that yellow. So that's that flat seven you could add. Now obviously if I wanted to turn this into a minor, we could go to a whole other spot, we could spell out that exact same box, but what if we were to just sort of look at what we have here and change one flavor, we would change that major third to a minor third. So we would play this note right here. And we would do that instead of that major third, right? So that major third right there would be like, uh, no, we're gonna shh, shh. So it's kind of hard to see, but I'm sort of like crossing out that major and I'm making it minor. Choices, flavors. So if I were to look for those same notes, kind of like, let's just scrap that. You got that, I know you got that. Let's look at this down in this area of the sort of open E. We know what an open E major looks like. That's the classic open E major. Now pick up on this gang. What I'm trying to show you is that there's a lot of stuff you already know that you've got to start leveraging and using for more, more uses. So you already know an open E chord. You know it like, the front of your hand, your fingertips can hold it. Take what we just did, we're like, all right, well, here's the major third right there. I wanna make that a minor third. Well, obviously, from past experience, we know that's gonna make it look like an E minor. And they're like, oh yeah, okay, well then that's that E minor pentatonic box there. You know you know this, now it's time to show it, okay? So that's that E minor pentatonic. Okay, now let's switch it to feeling like a major. So let's bring in the major third. Okay, 
so our training now has begun. Now I'm going to tell you major or minor, and on the fly, we're going to switch between the major and the minor feel. And it's great that we have this backing track just looping, kind of holding down a sort of neutral feeling, right? So we're let's go minor. Just playing off of those pink dots on the screen. It's okay if you're playing just kind of like running the scale. We're just kind of kicking the tires. Can you make that minor third a major third? So minor third becomes a major third. That circle note replaces the one that's a half step below it. So guess what? When I when I leave that flat seven in there, which is this note right here, that's that flat seven. We'll circle it in mustard because it's a bit spicy. If we combine that flat seven with a major third, meaning we've added those flavors to the to the repertoire, major third, flat seven. This is how we blend that major and minor blues sound. I want you to start thinking of it less as like a swapping out of an entire scale and more of a swapping out, you know, we're gonna mix out the ketchup for the mustard. We're gonna mix, mix out the uh, you know, paprika for the cayenne. It's not an overhaul, overhaul of the entire dish. We're still sort of living in the same groove and pocket, the same flavor. We're just bringing in the major, minor, major, minor. Okay, let's keep playing that game. So major, stay major. And now play wherever you got major. Now minor. Major. Major. Minor. Okay, gang, how are we feeling? That's our little warm up there. Welcome. If you're new to the channel, my name is Guitar Friend Tim. My name is Tim Fagan. I live in Nashville. I got a couple dogs. One of them was, they're chewing on the bully sticks. And one of them was sort of like hacking up a lung. He gets pretty exuberant, gets down to that last part. And it's like, oh, oh choking hazard? Well, we'll check it. Check in on them. I think I got one under the bed and one back there. They're wonderful pups. Hey, how are you? How's your Saturday going? How's, how's the weather out there where you are? Nashville is looking fantastic right now. Just glorious morning sunshine. Got my second coffee here going, I guess with the baby, the baby iced coffee. The hair is getting a little wild. I might need to trim, start looking a little, <laughs> little bit rustic out there, but you know, life is good. Friendly faces in the chat, a lot of members there. Thanks for showing up on a Saturday for our open gym. We got people mingling here who are members and those who are just checking out what's going on. We got people over here in the vertical. Hello, Carrie. Hello, Eunice. And Nightbot is my robot that pops in and drops uh, the link. So if you see the Nightbot dropping in the, the link, that's how you can check out more information about my lessons and courses. And what we're doing today is essentially a uh it's a long version of what we do every weeknight we do these workouts and literally there was one day a few months ago i was in yoga class and you know if you've ever taken a yoga class at the end of the class you're lying on flat on your back in shavasana and just kind of zoning out and and i remember thinking like wow this feels so good and i was so relieved as i often am that someone else could tell me what to do for an hour to just do the yoga the hot yoga class and just be like all right you take the wheel teacher and I'll just show up. And I've always enjoyed that whenever, whether it's a spin class or whatever, it's like, all right, someone else decide what I should do for a while because it just sort of eases my mind. And then I can really zone in and actually get a lot more out of it because I'm not having to try to manage the workout while I'm doing it. And then I thought, well, why don't we just do that for guitar? It's as simple as that. And I was like, well, yeah, I don't think that's exactly being done. And even if it is, it's just fun to offer. So that has become the main thing that we just, I think we're all on the same page that it's 
at the risk of saying what everybody in the AI and Bitcoin space is saying, it's game changing. It's an actual game changer because I have a lot of fun um, doing it. I can I can kind of just show up and, and get a sense of what people are uh, wanting more of. And we can just sort of get into a good flow of momentum. So every day during the week, we go live for like 15, 20 minutes and there'll be a theme of the week. And then we just sort of like build on it. So if you're ever wondering like, well, how do I practice? What do I practice? When do I practice? Like this is really sort of help stabilize that for people. More information on that is available in the description and also in the uh, in the chat, you'll see those links coming through. But anyway, today, as we embark into, uh, this is a bit of a review for my members because this week we've been talking about connecting fills. We'll talk about those, what they are. I kind of made up the term, but essentially it's what they sound like. Well, it's not some big you know, clickbait reveal. It's just connecting chords with fills that are really satisfying and they sort of make the 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 literal fills, the gaps in between the chords have more opportunities for playing things that the moment you play them, they sound like, oh, that sounds like a riff. It sounds like a famous song. It sounds like an intro uh, because it just sort of gives you these choices to sort of go back and forth between chords and you can use them in all sorts of situations. They're not just uh, tied to one particular song. But Right now, let's dust off our ears and our knowledge of the fretboard. So um, root name recall, we love it. We know it's time to do some more of it. And all that is, is you have a limited amount of time to tell me. And on your side of the screen, I'm hoping that you're just doing it. You don't need to drop it into the chat, but I'm just going to quiz you on the fifth and the sixth string. We'll start there. I might throw in the first string. I might throw in the second string. But the faster that you can recall the names of notes and be able to find them, this meat and potatoes foundational stuff, the more you'll be able to get all the good stuff that comes with it. So if you need to find a G on the sixth string, you find it. If you need to find a G on the sixth string and play a G chord, you got it. If you need to find a G minor, if you need to find a B flat, all those different things are right there as long as you're not catching a snag and being like, oh, let's see. Uh, oh, yeah, it's up here. So not only that, I'm going to try to quiz you in places where You'll find a C down here on the third string or the third fret of the fifth string. You'll also, of course, find it up here on the eighth fret, sixth string. You don't want those to be one way stronger than the other. You want to have them all even and ready to go. We hear a lot about it. We know we should be doing it, but this is a good way to practice together. So let's have a bit of a beat, nice and steady and slow. Clear your mind, breathe in deep, inhale everybody. And exhale. Root name recall. Here we go. Whatever information I don't give you, you have to fill in. And I encourage you to say it and play it on your side of the screen. C on the sixth string. Find the fret. Find the note. Eighth fret. F on the sixth string. First fret. We'll go a little bit faster as we get into it, right? D on the fifth string. Fifth fret. Second fret on the fifth string. See what I did there? B, as in boy. G sharp on the sixth string. Fourth fret. B, B as in boy on the sixth string. 7th fret, E on the 6th string, you got to find it in two places, E on the 6th string, Shadoi, open 12, open 12, E flat on the 5th string, E flat on the 5th string, 6th fret, 6th fret on the 6th string, so that same fret we just did, but on the 6th string, B flat. B flat on the fifth string. First fret. Ooh, we went rapid fire there. I kind of like that. Sort of a Simon Says vibe. First string, third fret. G. Remember, your first string and your sixth string are identical, so don't let that trip you up. Just know that you already know everything on the first string if you know your sixth string. First string, D. Tenth fret. D on the sixth string. 10th fret, A. D flat on the fifth string. Fourth fret, also C sharp. Remember D flat, C sharp, those guys are the same. I'm just gonna stop the drum beat now. And we're gonna add to this 
I'm going to tell you, uh, you know, the, I'm going to hint at what the note is, and now we're, I'm also going to say major or minor. So when you get there, I want you to play a chord that is either major or minor. So for example, if I say um, fifth string C minor, so you have to find the fret, find the C, and then build out a minor bar chord. And the voicing is up to you. If you want to like, you know, play the one that would be crazy to hold, but that one back there, that's fine. But I just want you to find the root and then find a shape of a major or minor chord. We'll start there. And remember, first string, it's going to be able, you'll be able to find it because it's the same as a sixth string, but you got to be able to spell your chords. It might be a triad or a piece of a chord. Let's say if we played like a B major first string, I might just play it right there. I might hold the entire bar chord. Sorry, the intonation on this lovely MIDI guitar is sometimes leaving a bit to be desired. But, uh, you know, spring is here, and any of our lovely guitar owners out there understand the elements will do what they do. Onward. Okay, ready. Clear the mind, and A minor, sixth string. B flat major, fifth string. G major, first string. G sharp minor, sixth string. D flat minor, fifth string. C sharp minor, sixth string. C sharp and D flat, it's that thing. Call back, we will. Yeah, that B is kind of we will rock you ish. Oh gosh. It, for some reason, that makes me want like want to go to a big sporting event. Just like the pounding on the bleachers, the boom, boom, ka, boom, boom, ka. Oh, wait, don't want to get demonetized because you know if I started singing, I'd sound exactly like Freddie. Anyway, um, uh, A flat minor, first string. There you go. E minor. Anywhere you want, E minor, anywhere you want. Sometimes having choice is the great paralyzer. E minor again, somewhere different than, than you just last played it. D, D sharp minor, first string. Okay, can we add to this? Are you ready? We're gonna go up one more notch. We're gonna add seven chords. So seven chords could be major or minor seven. Um, Let's imagine, you know, just as an example, if we're down here on the fifth string root playing a C, if we played like a C major seven. And in fact, let's go to this screen. I'll give you some choices just as a bit of review for our basic meat and potatoes are like probably the first major seven and, and dominant seven chords that we learn. Imagine that our root is right here on the fifth string. That's what a major seven would look like. Okay, so imagine if that, that open circle is right there on a C. You can slide that around. That's a slidable shape right there. Love it. Same, uh, same root here on the fifth string. Let's make a dominant seven. So dominant seven is just the long fancy name for what you would normally see as a seven chord, like a C seven without a major or minor. Okay, so that's a C seven. A C minor seven would look like that, right? So let's just put that up there right now. And for the next little stretch, I'll just focus on the fifth string. So I won't give you too many variables, but I will throw you either a minor seven, major seven, dominant seven, that's how I'll say it. Or I might just say regular major or minor. I might just say major, okay? So you've got five different flavors of chord, which you will be using all the time once you get these down cold, or you might already have, have them down cold. Um, and we're just going to focus on the fifth string. Okay. E minor seven. D major. Remember, it's all fifth string root. C major seven. I'm just going to keep going. We know where this needs to go. Our ear knows this progression. B seven. And I'm going to give you an add-on note that if you know it, you know it. So that pink note is an option that you can add. Same thing with that minor seven. Uh, and if you were to play that right there, it makes it a sus four. So that's nice. Lervely, lervely. 
Now, if this were a B minor seven, I could do that and I could add that pinky, that pink pinky note up there. It's a nice choice right there. Let's continue on. All right. Um, play me an A major, fifth string, A major. Play me a C major seven, C major seven. Play me an E flat major seven. Play me a D minor seven. Play me an F regular minor, just minor, F minor. Play me an F major. G7. D minor, regular D minor. B flat, major 7. A7. Okay, you're doing great. I can just tell, I can just tell. One more little round here. We're gonna bring in the six string root. Same type of thing. So let's review these flavors for the different chords. They're great to have, great to know. Um, if you wanna make a six string based major seven, that's your root right there. You're not gonna need, for this particular shape, you're not gonna need the fifth string. This one sometimes I, I draw the wrong way, so I'm sort of taking my time, or the first string. So this would be like if we were on G. So if you're gonna strum it, you gotta be able to mute that fifth string by letting your, your first finger on your left hand or your fretting hand sort of touch, but not press all the way down. So you're not pressing down, you're just letting it mute. So fifth string muted. Same thing is happening. That first string is muted by just the flesh of the other fingers, kind of curving, just relax, just sort of touching the string until it mutes, right? Um, same root note here. We'll imagine making this a, let's see, we went to dominant next. This one, we are going to hold down all the strings. There's that flat seven. There's that third right there. Then the minor seven. You got some choices with this minor seven in terms of how you hold it. Uh, an add on note that you can do here with the pink one could be like right here. You could do the suspended thing there again. You could also add this right there. So that if we're on G and we do this dominant seven, so that's a G seven. If you want to make it a suspension chord, G sus four, that's a great chord. If you want to add that pinky up there, that's adding another flat seven. Now, if we're on the same spot here, we make a G minor seven. You could add this one up here. That's that same flat seven that works for both of them. You could also hold this one, watch the left hand here. You could walk, you could hold this one which is a nice, comfortable way to hold it. And in that case, you'd be muting the fifth string. All right, options. Um, you know, and uh, let's let's just spell a few things out, then we'll move on to a new segment. Check it out. Um, a, fifth, a six string root now only. Let's do B dominant seven. So B dominant seven, I'm right there, I'm giving it away. I can make it a sus. A major seven. B flat minor seven, six string, B flat minor seven. It's kind of nice and jazzy. G major seven. Um, tell me in your own mind, what chord results on the 10th fret if I play six string 10th fret and we'll just make this a regular major. That's a D, D major. Let's make that a D minor seven. C sharp seven, dominant seven. Let's do um, F major seven. Love it. How we feeling? Let's take a breather, come up for air. How we doing gang? Uh, we all right? We all right? I'm gonna look for another drum beat. Give me an emoji, an emoji that represents how your day is going so far, how this guitar lesson is striking you this far. I'm gonna stop this drum beat. Let's look for some other ones. Similar, similar feels here coming from the same session. Ooh, that one's kind of a nice slow jam sort of thing. We'll grab that. 
let me know. How you doing out there in streaming land? What you got on the docket today after this guitar lesson? What you got cooking? Ooh, spanking. Bow, boom, bow, boom, bow, boom, bow. There's some that come here. I'm using, by the way, if you're wondering what I'm using, Ableton Live. That's what I'm looking at. And I'm dragging in uh, loops using Loop Cloud. And I've got a bunch of nice samples from Loop Cloud, but also Yurt Rock is what I use. They have these incredible drum uh, drum packs and all that. Um, so all these different, you know, I'm just touching on them and it's lighting up different things. It matches the tempo that I have so I could change the feel and the tempo once I get it into Ableton, which is a good time. Bam, bam, bam. Let's go a little bit faster. So that's the tempo we've been doing is 87. Let's make this like 92. Turn this down just a little bit. And I'll build a little something something groove and we'll just sort of like jam out. Somebody give me a key. Give me a key, major or minor. Give me a letter name and a major or minor and I'll follow that and we'll build something. Hey, happy Easter there, John. Uh, I'm looking at people coming in here on the vertical and on the horizontal, on the landscape and the portrait. I appreciate y'all being here. We got Reggie, Reggie brand new member. Reggie jumping in feet first. Joined us last night for his first GWAD and uh, I hope it went well. We try to mix in some things that are like, you know, easy peasy and some other things that are a little bit more spicy. B flat minor, love it. So over this, I might play something real minimal. You know I like it when my head does that. Ooh, let's play some B flat minor pentatonic over this. Great key, that was a good call. Now, do you go by George or Jorge? Because when I see that, I think Jorge, as I learned in Spanish class many years ago, but I've met Georges that spell it that way. Hey, either way, B flat minor, great key. Glad to have you. Um, let's check it out, B flat, see if I can find this here. So like, look at that. Right there, we know all those notes. They're all within our B flat minor pentatonic, right? But before I go spelling out the usual, let's kind of, let's build this little by little. By that I mean, let's think about what are some flavors we can add to this minor pentatonic. We've talked about already today, like, you know, we've got the flat seven. So what if we bring in this flavor right here? Can you see that? I know it's kind of weird, sort of a darker purple, but you can kind of see it. Try that one. We'll just we'll add these one at a time, right? So play with play with what's up on the screen. Limit yourself just to those choices. Just to really hear. Isn't that interesting? Really jazzy. I know jazzy is the most insulting word to real jazz musicians. I get it. I'm sorry. nice that we can't just do our usual we're not doing that right you ever play down low try that a lick like that Too, right? Huh. Okay, so what 
what you hear me doing also is the connecting the chromatic. Try that. Just try messing around with it. Or just play whatever you like in that sort of style of we're just really containing it. You hear how that can be made interesting even with fewer notes playing with rhythmic ideas and like let's add some more here's one i'm gonna throw your way you might know this already what if we bring in this I need, to, I need to vary my color schemes just a bit so you can see it but still see the green. It's a, it's a tough balance. How about this one? Oh, this is a good color. This one actually works. A little bit brighter. Okay. Let's see, we would have another spot for that one. Can anyone tell me what what's that note that I just added right there? In terms of the scale degree, right? So we're thinking in terms of this is our root B flat, right? So I did, oh, okay, that's my B flat right there. There's another B flat right there. Yeah, that's the six. And you can hear that in that guitar part because if I was playing the chords, I might do like, and then it's kind of going back and forth between a, a one minor chord and then like a four chord that's like a, a dominant seven, so. So that's where you get that. Six. Let, let's just play with that now. All right. Some other notes that we already have with this sort of, we, we threw in the spine, the sort of backbone or the equator of the minor pentatonic. Another one that you should really have like near and dear to your heart. Is that right there? So I just circled that minor third. Okay. Because guess, guess what? We're going to do an ear training quiz using these notes in a little bit. So try to lock in on these notes and get to know them. In fact, I'll, I'll narrow down our choices. Erase all these, we don't need that. It'll either be the one, which is the root, or it will be the flat three, which is like the minor third. Or it will be the nine. Well, we'll go sequential. It'll be the six, which is the six. Or it'll be the nine, which is the nine. So when you answer, I want you to drop in your answer in the chat. So in a moment, I'm going to quiz you. An example would just be like, if I were to say, okay, what is this note? It's one of those four choices. And you would write in the chat, You'd reach over after playing it on your guitar and you'd say, oh, that, that right there is the root. And you feel pretty good right now. You feel pretty confident. And I don't blame you for that. But the reason that you feel confident is because I got the dots up there and the dots are showing you everything you need to see. But what if, uh-oh, what if I just conveniently covered it with, oh, just what happens to be a wonderful advertisement for my uh, wares and services. Now what note am I playing? Ha ha, we, get, we just got frisky with it. Ta -da. Now, those of you that are watching on the vertical, I don't have the thingy set up that covers the fretboard, so good on you. You're gonna get the, uh, you're gonna get the version of the quiz where you can find the answers in the back of the textbook. Okay, so give it your best shot. Don't worry if you get it wrong. Your choices are going to be either, they're either gonna be, so you're gonna drop into the chat R for root. And you can just, for shorthand, you can just write three because we know it's the flat third. Okay, or six or nine. 
Or you can do one, you get it. One, three, six, or nine. Those are your four choices. And let's just review. So we've got root. Root is the one that feels like home. Okay, the flat third sort of feels like it's got that sort of blues bend like V6 has that sounds the most like it kind of grabs one of those chord changes, right? It kind of sticks out probably the most. It sort of needs that, that four chord to be playing a... And then the nine has a flavor of probably the most jazzy. There it is, that word again, sorry. We ready? All right, here we go. Question number one, note number one. Which note is that? Jorge, what do we think? Tim Taylor in with the first guess? He says three. Jeff saying six. A couple more guesses. And then we got John on the vertical. He can see it. He's like, what's what's the big what's the big hold up here? Nice. Jorge, you and Jeff are correct. Tim Taylor, great guess. But in fact, that's the six. People, congratulations, you got it. This is just, this is just review. <laughs> oh, I love it, John. Yeah, he's a, he's an honest man. He's he's really testing his ear. That's good. Quick pause. We'll breathe from the jam track, and I, I recommend you do that whenever you're jamming with jam tracks, especially the ones that can go on for like nine, ten minutes. Stop the track every now and then, and just like enjoy the scenery and breathe a bit. And if you can, I, I didn't do it just now, but a lot of times I like to try to, as much as I can, like stop and end with an ending. For example, like, ooh, just the breakdown. Like give it a little bit of sense of finality so you don't just get loop brain. Anyway, but what I want to um, help bring into the fold is like, why would we do this, you know, other than it, it seems like when we quiz ear training, it seems like it could maybe be like just a, a party trick of like, oh, that's fun to know, I guess. It's very different than perfect pitch. When you see someone who is gifted with perfect pitch and maybe they're, you know, from the womb, they were able to do that. Most people have that as like a, an actual natural biological gift. And then they hone it through practicing music and through the years. What we're doing right here is relative pitch. And in, and I think you may have heard a lot of people talk like Rick Beato is one who talks about the incredible value of relative pitch is so that wherever you're dropped into the water of music you'll be able to tell where you are as long as you get like one or two notes that you establish as, okay, that's the root. Well, if that's, it's the if then. If that's the third, then I know this next note that just happened or this next chord must be relative to what I just, because that's all music really is. is and I know that's one of those like, oh, he, he's going for the big generalization. But in essence, all these rules, rules that we throw at you, yeah, they matter, but they matter only based on the context of what's happening. So like, I might say that like, yeah, this is a cool like bluesy run, but that's because when I'm in B flat and when I'm playing a guitar, when I'm playing, 
it's all relative to that context that that would sound good. If we change the key and no one tells me and I, I keep playing a B flat, that could sound like relatively speaking awful. But the point is that if you can hear these tones and, and start to build your vocabulary of like, yeah, oh, I can confidently hear the root. And not only that, I can hear it and I can do something with it. I can find it because I'm practicing guitar. And if someone can at least, you know, give me the key or they can let me listen to the loop a couple times, I can like through whatever recipe you have, you can be like, bah, 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 bah. and then you find that root. And then relative to that, you can be like, oh, if that's my root. Then I've got my, that's how we find scale shapes and everything. It's like we have some information to start with and then we build out the rest. So as we build in these flavors of like, it gives you more confidence with your inner ear. So that if this track just sort of started up, I don't know if I have the loop even lined up. Or was it this one? So you show up to a jam session, you show up to an open mic, and the band is playing this, they're like, yeah, go ahead, B flat. And you're like, cool. Well, all I ever practice is, uh, okay, B flat. Okay, I can find my box, one. But as you're doing that, you remember this crazy guy on the internet who was like, remember to play the ninth or the sixth. And you're like, you know what? I heard that enough times that I think I can kind of hear already. That would sort of work. You'll start to be able to take these little chances because you're like, yeah, I, I don't know for sure, but I kind of think I can hear the relative pitch being like. And then you just run it enough times so that your hands know it, your ears know it, and then then your soul knows it, right? So, um, what do we think, gang? Has anyone out there done uh, extensive work with ear training? Because I love it, and I've forgotten how much I enjoy it, but now that I'm teaching some guitar and all that, um, I would love to... I actually had a thought the other day to create a bit of like, I don't know, like an ear training podcast that is more engaging and entertaining because a lot of the classic ear training stuff is just bare bones, like minor, six, pong, pong, and then they play it or whatever, or, you know, perfect, fourth. And uh, would that interest you guys if I, you know, I'm thinking of like, of course, maybe I'll make it a course, but I, I might, I might just start making it almost like a free resource, like a podcast or something that I put out on Spotify just as a as a thing. Um, yeah, the Beata course looks great. I mean, he's so good. Uh, I have come to really learn and and respect uh, Rick because at first, when I think a lot of us maybe discovered Rick Beata, we're a little you know just sort of like, oh, it's a guy who just reviews music. And he does like these are the what what makes a song great and all that. But now he's doing these incredible interviews, and you don't get those interviews without having put in all the time and energy to earn people's trust. And he's sitting down with Sting and. George Benson and Michael McDonald, anyone else? I, I did mention in the comments when he got Michael McDonald on, I was like, Michael McDonald? Yeah, I'm gonna be there. I thought that was gonna get more more thumbs up than it did, but you know. I watched 40 Year Old Virgin last night for the first time. I had seen bits and pieces of it, like, you know, on whatever, TBS through the years, but I'd never seen it from the beginning. It holds up, that's a funny movie right there. Yes, yes, and yes, my gang. Tony, interval awareness? Yes, indeed. That's that's what this is. Uh, intervals are huge. And it's really just like how far a leap from the note you are is the next one that you're hearing or, or that you're hearing in your head. Possibilities. Yeah, and if it doesn't work out, exactly. John, John over on the vertical is saying if it doesn't work out, just pretend you're playing chromatics. That's I love Victor Wooten, as you all know. Um, I've mentioned in the past, if you haven't already, check out Victor Wooten's book, The Music Lesson. It's fantastic. And it's written as almost like a fable or a parable. It's like sort of like a fiction story, but it's such an effective way of teaching these kind of really, what can sometimes be abstract or, or esoteric, I guess is the word for like these concepts of groove and like confidence and expression in music where there are no wrong notes because you're never more than like a half step away from something that would be the right note or in the key and all that. And it really is true. The, the amount that you are able to be flexible and confident and most of all present in the moment, you can stick the landing. And if you don't, it's okay. It's just music. It's okay. There was literally a time, this is like a little bit of a name drop moment, but a few years ago, several years ago, when I was playing with Colby Calais, we were on this French TV show and one of the other performers was uh, Sting's uh, guitarist, Do Dominic Miller. 
which it just goes to show what a cool talk show in France that they have like these amazing like musicians. They have pop artists like Colby and and uh, someone like Dominic because um, the host of the show is Manu Caché, the drummer who played with a bunch of people, but among them Peter Gabriel, like on In Your Eyes, that's him playing drums. So he's the host of the show. So he brings on Dominic Miller and Pino Palladino is his, is his bassist. And so I got to hang out backstage and ask Pino a couple of questions like nervously, just be like, wow, man, you know, just we're talking a little bit. And what I noticed was that when they did the, uh, the run through, the sort of uh, dress rehearsal, they're learning the song on the fly. And it's a pretty complex like jazz tune. And they're kind of just, just talking like regular musicians do in the sense that they're like, so wait, after that one thing where it goes the bunt, the bunt, the bunt, does it, oh, it does sort of like a bunt, a bunt, like they're sort of singing out the parts to each other. And from the look of it, you'd think like, I, I don't even know if they played the whole song all the way through. It sort of seemed like they were just kind of like playing bits and pieces of it. It didn't really seem like it was pulled together yet. And the, the next time they were going to play it was going to be on air. Uh, and it went flawlessly. It was amazing. And I remember like asking Pino, like, so when you're like getting ready to play a song that you've never played before, like, how do you prepare? And, and he just, in a way, described what I'm sort of echoing now. Like he said it and then I'm saying what he said, which is just like just by staying present and watching the other musicians. And then he just finished it by saying, like, and if I miss a note, what's the worst that could happen? It's just music. It's like just, you know, putting it back into perspective to be like, oh, yeah, like it'll be OK. Like and the more confidence you have that if you hit a wrong note, it's not like the floor is lava. It's not like you're going to get canceled. You're going to figure it out. You're going to recover in the moment. And if you stay in the moment and don't run from it, then you'll be able to have some fun with it. That's my philosophical Tim Tangent of the day. But there will be more. What do we think? Yeah, exactly. It goes abba, abba. Like there's been so many times and I'm working with incredible musicians where I've had to apologize in advance and be like, I'm sorry, but could it be kind of like a buku jack, buku jack, buku? And then they're like, uh, do you mean? And then they'll play the actual part. I'm like, yeah, that's way better than I would have thought of. Thank you. Um, let's talk about some connecting fills. And again, I'm, I'm glad that you're here and sticking with me on this. Uh, I hope that you're, you've got your guitar. I hope that you're up for playing a bit more. We're going to get into some more of the hands-on stuff. Um, but I will say, like, maybe on the heels of me mentioning, I used to play with Colby. I wrote a song with her and Jason Mraz called Lucky, which is their big uh, duet they did years ago. And that kind of launched me into the world of professional songwriting and producing. So right here I have my whole recording set up and I've done everything, you know, film and TV stuff, which is just to say that, like, I, I love guitar. I've been hired many times to, to be just a guitarist, but I love songs and I love the way songs and guitar parts and any part goes into a great sounding arrangement. So that's kind of where you might get a sense that my brain is sort of dabbling in different things. Um, but it, I love coming back to guitar because that's where it all began for me, you know, with Stevie Ray and Weezer and Chet Atkins and just a whole mishmash of things I was listening to back in the 90s. So here's a little 30 second like mini commercial song, but but it's like entertaining. So uh, let me see if I can play this without crashing the stream. And again, to my people on the vertical, sorry, I haven't figured out how to get these videos to play over there. Uh, but this is a, a little, if you're wondering who is this dude, uh, this is the answer to that. Wait, who is this dude? Jim? Honolulu back in 1993, boy in his bedroom playing Stevie and the Weeds. One day he's gonna move out to LA, gonna tour around the world getting paid to play. Jim. You know, lucky and it won a Grammy, Draw me a shout at him out in a magazine. Jim. Still playing that guitar every single day, making records in Nashville with Lolly and Tony. Yeah. It's nice to meet you. <laughs> it's fun it's silly and i appreciate i was able to read some of the comments yeah i think um more ear training would be good in my sort of silly style and we'll sort of like try to make them a little more bite size unless this again this is the saturday sort of ramble where i just sort of go live without much of a plan but um one thing that we've been working on this week that again, I'm calling connecting fills. You'll know them, you'll love them. And they are familiar. If you've ever played anything, starting with just like open chords, anything that sounds like a bit folky or a bit bluegrass, and some of these literally sound like, like the one that we were playing this week that immediately sounds kind of like um, Neil Young. Hey, hey, my, my. But that right there, what makes that song sound like that song, it's just A minor. 
going to D minor for that intro. Isn't that so cool? I mean, it's so simple, but it's like... And you can build a repertoire of those things that are just... And they're just great. They're just like fun connecting pieces and they they add a lyrical sort of singable quality to it. Like if a and they and they enhance with just one guitar, you kind of bring in a bass element like So let's start there and we'll sort of go with the open chords. We'll do a major and a minor version of it. Uh, and since we're on the minor, let's start there. And Let's imagine, I'm just, you'll see what I'm doing here in a bit. What I'm basically drawing out, and this is a bit of review, just tell me off the top of your head, A minor, the relative major to that, if A minor is our key we're starting with, the relative major is, fill in the blank, please. Boom, 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 boom. So I'm just gonna, you'll see where we're headed with this. I'm filling in a piece of a scale. I'm filling in like, the lower, you know, chunk of a scale. And at the moment, I'm gonna circle these as our, our root notes. In fact, we'll just have one root that appears here. I'll circle that and I'll circle that, okay? And I'll also circle that. So those three notes that I circled in white, they represent like the chord changes. Imagine we have this song that's going A minor, to D, A minor, and then we'll do an E7, okay? So, sorry, the the none, none of this is to scale as far as like, I didn't write those out properly, but in terms of the distances, but. So those are our, our chords. It's a bit like, you know, there is a hell, or like, it is the rising sun or whatever. It sounds like a bunch of tunes. It's nice and, and sort of somber sounding and, and lovely and classic. But now we have, So we're just working our way across the scale. And the way I've been describing it this week is that imagine if you were looking at the map of a subway map and you had a destination you needed to get to. If destination one is, that's our literal point A, that's our note A, just happens to be. And if we wanted to get from point A to point D, we could, I guess we could just go directly there. But it looks like on the map, we have to stop at these connecting points. So let's just sort of honor the, the tube map, as they say, across the pond, and hit these spots in between and make it real simple. So this is a way that if, even if you, if the stream cut out right now and you're like, well, what did he mean by that? You could start building your own connecting fills by looking at the major scale or the minor scale, the full scale um, for whatever key you're in, and then look at the chords that are happening in a chord progression that you're playing or one that you're writing and just see how you can connect those chords with the in-between pieces being these like kind of baseline walking movement. So let's do a little drum beat. Turn this up. Boom, ba 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 boom, ba 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 boom, ba da ba ba. I'll do a little bass line here with this dress Wait, wait, I knew it was gonna do that. Oh man, I've been doing this all week. Actually, I like that riff enough where I don't want to lose it. So hold on, I'm just going to drag this to a thingy. Stand by, please stand boy. Please stand boy then. More in the gap, more in the gap, love. Um, okay. Gonna tune up while I'm here. Oh, that sounded like ba do do, ba da da, ba da da, ba da da. Random question, Does, do any of you have any uh, travel coming up? Any spring or early summer travel that you're excited about? Somehow talking about London and the tube got me thinking about like, man, it's been a while since I've gotten out across the pond. Um, any travel in your plans? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I just did bare bones without any connections so that we can do the connections when we play. 
Here we go. A minor. See that? Now, if you're comfortable with this, can you spell it out? Boom. Is this making sense? Is this making sense? The walk and bass. Yeah, that's what you're thinking. Exactly. And so some of the stuff as we get into this, when we move into the sort of blues thing, just as a, as a heads up with what Jorge is mentioning, it's like the... And obviously there's all kinds of different ways to do it, but it's there's ways to do it chromatically and build it off of chord tones. And this first approach, we're just starting like open chords using the, the built-in scale. But you'll start to see like, oh, what we're really doing is juggling like, I've got a chord, I've got another chord coming up. How much time do I have? How many spaces do I have to fill in? If I were to start this fill, this is how drummers have to think. If I start this fill like on the two of the one, two, three, four, if I start on the two or the and of two, or if I start on three, I have to fill in those those gaps so that it lands smoothly. So if I went boom, ba da 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 boom, ba da 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 da, like if I just sliced up those pieces into a bunch of other notes, or da 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 da, those would be variations on the underlying like simple boom, ba boom 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 ba. So let's add one little new detail to that. We'll do boom. Bum, 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 bum. So we're literally just going to double up that first note. So that version one was bum, 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 bum. Version two is going to be bum, 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 bum. Okay, so that's what we're going to do. But guess what? We're going to change the chord progression into being C major. So. Now our bass notes are going to be, remember, C and A minor are the same relative major and minor. So we don't need to change any of the pink dots. We're just emphasizing now our root notes reflect the fact that we're going to go C up to F, down to C, down to G7. So this now will be... This is the one that sounds kind of like lean on me, right? Boom. So... Times in our lives. Oh, don't demonetize me because I sound just like it a bit with us. Now, correct me if I'm wrong. I'm wrong. I get the impression that we got a lot of players here that have played a lot of songs. No doubt you have played riffs that sound like this within songs, such as Lean on Me or like. You name it, like any. But what might be different now? What I'm hoping is that this gives you something you can take out of a particular song. And a lot of times, uh, students come to me and they're like, "Hey, I've been learning a lot of riffs, but I don't really know full songs, or I don't know where. If I learn this song, I don't know if I can take that idea and like run with it." This is what that is. So if, if you learn a song where it's like, um, time and alive, now you can be like, okay, so what's going on here is C major, the scale is connecting these chords. That's the idea. Let's try it now. Um, and again, we got to clear this loop so it doesn't mess us up. Mm. So our variation is that we're going to double up the, you'll see. Boom. Play along with me. Exactly, yeah. So John is saying it's good to learn vocal lines on guitar. Absolutely. Now whether that's like actual melodies, keep going, keep going. Boom, boom. I'll just play the simple chords. So like the vocal melody is a great place to start if you're gonna learn some some soloing or improvisation ideas. The bass line, if it's written nicely, is a is a great thing to listen for. If you listen to some of like, let's say Paul McCartney's bass lines, they can give you so many new ideas in terms of phrasing and rhythm. 
and some of the best bass lines are very singable, singable parts. Here we go now. I'm going to add some new fill ideas in a little bit here. Same chords. the backbone, the meat and potatoes. Check this out now. Now we're going to find our connecting fills up the neck instead of down below the roots, below being that way. You can see those sort of lighter purple dots there. What scale would you say, what scale shape am I grabbing all those dots from? It's different, it's not the exact C major that we were doing before, like the full C major scale. Instead, looking at some of the comments here. And if you got to run, it's all good. I totally understand. We've been going long. We'll wrap it up in a little bit. Appreciate you being here. And by the way, in case you're interested, my name's Tim Fagan. And if you join us in our membership area, we got these great workouts we do every weekday. We have over 100. Today is the 113th episode. So you've got plenty to choose from. You can search them all by topic, all the, the past replays. And you can dive in and go deep on different areas that, that you get lit up by. Or you can join us live. And it's just like this. You're just going to be commenting on an unlisted YouTube stream that we have just for members only. Uh, and then we have self-guided courses that are based around songs called Gauntlets that are my same style of teaching. And I've, I made all these within the last like eight months. So none of the stuff is like from 15 years ago. I've just started doing this, relatively speaking, but I'm having fun. Um, and there's a lot going for us. So uh, you get two weeks free. Uh, one other thing I got to tell you, there is a discount code that you can use. So not only do you get your first two weeks free no matter what, even if you have a discount code, you get 14 days to try everything out. But for this weekend, if you enter the discount riffs for free, and I'll just sort of spell that out literally. Um, oh, look at that. Look at that guy. Riffs. Oh, let's use a better color. This is like from uh, Dire Straits, right? Riffs for free. Look at that, perfect, perfect handwriting. Riffs for free, and it won't be free, but it gets you $25 off the, the annual membership. Um, so check that out, guitarfriendtim.com. That's the vibe. Now, back to our normally scheduled craziness. This is Major Pentatonic. the my girl stuff so what I want you to do here and then we'll sort of wrap things up this will be a nice little kind of this is enough right it's a lot um, but I want you to treat in this case these purple dots these guys up here and you can see the the overall shape there right that's coming out of this one that C major pentatonic like oh yeah okay there's a C there's a C there's a C but this, this chunk of it right here, you've used it. I know you've used it already. It is the classic kind of. 
soul and R&B and Hendrix fills the whole deal. You got to have this area sort of like built into these bar chords that you've always got this kind of opportunity for these fills up here. So I want you to treat this as a playground that you can fill in with tasteful rhythmic fills, but make them entirely your own. So if we're doing, uh, let's see. Play variations, right? You know, and to practice it, you might play the, the same one over and over again. So watch this, like. So you might get one so you can play it anywhere. And then you want to play some variations. So let's let's try flipping them. get confident with that keep trying to play that game where you nail the chord changes but you bring in a little bit more of whatever you feel like all right keep doing that i'm gonna play rhythm for you keep going jam out here for a bit feel free to join us in the courses and community thank you so much to my members who are here hanging out on a saturday it means a lot that you share your time and energy you keep that good momentum going Ooh, Otto, i just saw you saying you're going a, a month in europe love it oh and i appreciate you saying you're going to join us that'd be wonderful we'd love to have you the water's fine um jam out here now you're free from playing the connecting fills but you can do that we're just playing C, C major, C major pentatonic, throwing a little bit of C major blues. 